Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. There are lots of ways to save money. You still hear about people tucking it away under mattresses, putting it away in a favorite piggy bank or a cookie jar. But there's a much better way to save, and that's by buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. It's the real easy way of saving money. Your employer automatically sets aside a certain sum of money each payday, any amount you name. It's all done before you get your pay, so in that way you never miss it. When enough is accumulated, you receive a Series E savings bond, automatically too. There's no bookkeeping or budgeting problems for you. It's also the smart way of saving. Series E savings bonds pay back $4 for every three you put in, even more if you hold them past maturity. Yes, there are many ways of saving money. But today, while you're thinking about it, join the 8 million other Americans who find it easier to save through the automatic payroll savings plan. This message is brought to you as a public service. At Selkirk in the Yukon Territory, the short summer was drawing to a close. There was a crispness in the air that old-timers recognized as a forewarning of sudden freezing temperatures and heavy snows. Many prospectors had come into town from miles around to take the last boat of the season to the States. Larry Rowland and two tough-looking companions had ridden from Whitehorse and had taken over a deserted cabin a few miles out from Selkirk along the river. The three men discussed certain plans they had in mind. Kirk, you and Jim will leave here with plenty of cash if you string along with me. That's what we want, Larry. Yeah, but the robbers we helped you with around Whitehorse didn't get us much. We got enough to keep going, didn't we? Sure, sure, we're not kicking. And like I told you on the way here, this is the time and the place for us to really make a haul. While they wait for the boat, the prospectors who have crowded into town are spreading around a lot of cash. You think it's safe for us to stop here for a while? The law will be looking for us. We're safe enough. We've been careful to mask our faces so they don't know what we look like. Uh, when do we strike and where, Larry? Hey, uh, how about the bank? That's out, Jim. I've been here at this time of year before, and I know they have the bank well guarded. And where's all the cash coming from that you talked about? They have two places in town where there's plenty. The hotel safe is usually filled with gold that prospectors leave there for safekeeping. Yeah, I reckon that's right. And the other place is the trading post. There's a big business this time of year. We'll hit the hotel first, then lay low for a while. The night before the boat leaves, we'll rob the trading post. Sounds good to me. Tonight, we'll ride into town and grab what's in the hotel safe. We'll wear our masks and separate after the robbery, then meet here later. It was about midnight when Larry, Turk, and Jim arrived in Selkirk and stopped in front of the hotel. The hotel was filled to capacity, and most of the patrons had left their gold and valuables in the hotel safe. A few prospectors were in the lobby when the three crooks entered. Don't anybody move. This is a hold up. Holy macro, mass crooks. They'll take all that gold. Keep them covered, fellas. Come on. You, Clark, give me everything that's in the safe. Make quick about it, you get a bullet. Come on, get moving. Yes, yes, sure. I'll give it to you right away. All right, son, I'm not going on. Grab it, that gun. That shows we mean business. He's lucky he's just wounded. Now clean out that safe. Hurry. Come on, get over there. Hurry. 
A few minutes later, the three crooks ran from the hotel and hurriedly mounted. Now we'll separate. Get the loot into the saddlebags, quick. All right, let's go. Hey, look, the hat's supposed to run in towards you. I'll settle him. That stopped him. Now get moving. Get it. Get it. The following morning, at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson, Sergeant Preston entered the inspector's office. Good morning, Inspector. I came as soon as I got your message. Good. Sergeant, I want you to get to Selkirk as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. What's happened? Well, Crooks robbed the hotel there last night. I received a telegram saying the constable was wounded, and he tried to stop them from leaving. There were three of them. They were all masked. I see. They might be the same ones who are wanted for robbery on Whitehorse. Yes, I want them brought in. I'll do everything possible to bring them in, sir. The last boat of the season is leaving for Selkirk this afternoon. We'll be on it. Fine. Goodbye and good luck, Sergeant. Goodbye, Inspector. Come along, King. <laughs> when the riverboat reached Selkirk, Sergeant Preston, who had taken his horse Blackie with him, rode to the trading post to talk to the owner, Scotty McCloud. Oh, Blackie. Oh, boy. That is. Come on, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston. <laughs> it is good to see you and King again. Hello, Scotty. You were the one who sent the telegram to headquarters about the robbery, so I came directly from the boat to talk to you. I'm glad you did, Sergeant. How's the constable? Oh, he's getting along just fine. But threatened because he can't get around to hunt the crooks who shot him in the leg. He's at my cabin and getting fine care. Good. There were three of them. They used horses to get away. I see. Well, I'll go talk to the constable. I'll make inquiries around town. Someone may be able to give me a description of those crooks. Uh, those who saw them don't agree as to what they look like. But I sure hope you manage to track them down before they strike again, Sergeant. It's going to be difficult, Scotty. But when I go back to headquarters, I'll have them with me. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. The bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. The two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. And oh, it's a grand slam home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. In the cabin along the river, Larry Rowland awakened from a doze and sat up as he heard a horse stopping outside. That must be Turk and Jim. Where's Jim, Turk? He stayed at the cafe for a while. And look, I told you fools to stay away from town. Next thing you know, somebody will get wise. Ah, stop worrying so much. We can't take chances. There are lots of strangers in town waiting to leave for the States. The riverboat's in two. Brought several new prospectors to town. So the boats arrived, huh? Yeah. You remember, it leaves day after tomorrow. Uh-huh. We'll have to pull that trading post robbery tonight or tomorrow night. We'll do it tomorrow night. Oh, hold it, hold it. Uh, there's Jim coming now. Yeah, I wonder what made him change his mind about staying. Well, Jim, you must have left town right behind me. Thought you were going to stay a while. I found out something right after you left. Came to tell you and Larry. Tell us what? There's another Mountie in town. He's got a big husky with him. What? It's that Sergeant Preston we heard about. Sergeant Preston's in Selkirk, you say? Yeah, he came in on a boat from Dawson. He was in a cafe a while ago asking questions. Yeah, that's not so good. You can say that again. Now, look, we've run into Monty's before, Larry. There's nothing to worry about. I reckon you haven't heard as much about that particular Monty as I have, Jim. Preston and that dog of his are dynamite. That's what I've heard, too. The bar keeps that Preston's here to run down the cooks or rob the hotel. Meaning us. What you fellas heard is true. We were masked. You won't get a line on us. Nobody can identify us. Yeah, that's right. 
The trail's cold. Yeah. But still... Now, look, Larry. Are you thinking of backing out on that trading post deal? We get plenty there. The trading post sure has taken in the cash lately. Well, we'll go through with it. Then we'll take the boat to the States. Preston around will be taking a big chance, though. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. It'll get that Mountie and his dog out of the way, Larry. Go ahead and make plans to rob the trading post. And leave Sergeant Preston to me. The following day, the crooks made their plan. All right, Turk. What's your plan to get Preston and the dog away from town? Better be good, Turk. Don't worry. It is good. We're listening. Well, we'll clear out this cabin right now. Taking what stuff we want with us. Go on. We'll set the cabin on fire. Then head for town... Riding in one at a time. What's that got to do with Preston? Just this. I'll go find the money. What? Go find him? Yeah. I'll act all upset. I'll tell him three mass crooks raided my cabin and burned it. He and the dog will come out to investigate. I'd expect you to come back out here with him. Don't worry. I'll get out of it some way. While he and the dog are wasting time out here... We'll rob the trading post. Hey, that's a good idea, Turk. After the robbery, we'll separate like before and head for the boat one at a time. And we'll all be on board when it sails in the morning. Yeah, but if the money and his dog are as good at tracking as I've heard, they the might... The temperature's dropped to zero outside. The ground's frozen hard and it'll be tough tracking anyone on it. Yeah, that's right. Well, I reckon it's all right, then. Let's pack up our stuff and then we'll set fire to the cabin. Come on, get busy. Right. Later that afternoon, Turk rode hurriedly into town. Learning Preston was at the cafe, he went there to carry through his plan. Hey, has anyone seen that bounty, Sergeant Preston? Hello, I am. What's happened? Yes, Sergeant, I, I'm sure glad I found you. What's the matter? Three masked men. They raided my cabin, took all I had, and then set fire to it. Must be the same three who robbed the hotel. Hey, mister, it's a wonder they didn't kill you. Yes, it is. How'd you get away from them? They didn't see me. I saw them coming along the trail. I ran out and hid in some bushes behind the cabin till they left. And I rode here to find you. I... Are you hurt? I'll get you brandy. No, Sergeant. I just got a weak heart. With all this excitement. Brandy. Oh, this may help him here. Drink this. Oh, thanks. Where is your cabin? About three miles down the river trail. Oh, gee, that must be the place Judd Wilson left. Yeah, yeah, that's a place. I know where it is, Sergeant. I'll take you there. All right. Maybe we can pick up that trail. Let's go, King. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Accompanied by a prospector, Sergeant Preston and King hurriedly left the cafe. Gee, there's that fellow's horse. I saw him when he rode up to the hitch rack. Sure looks like he ran that horse all the way. Yes. Poor fellow was very much upset. For a moment, the Mountie stood beside Turk's horse, with King sniffing beside him. And then Preston went to his own horse, Blocky. <laughs> Easy, Blocky. I'll get out there and look around. Let's go, King. Well, maybe this time you'll get a line on him, eh? I hope so. Get up, Blocky. Come on, By the time Sergeant Preston and the prospector arrived at the smoldering cabin with King, the sky was heavily overcast with a threat of snow. It had taken some time to get there, and King stood panting as the two men stopped and dismounted. Oh, my God. Oh, my Come on, King. <laughs> they did a good job of burning the cabin. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing left of it. That fellow sure was lucky to get away like he did. Yes, he was. He said he hid behind some bushes. Yeah. The cabin's in a clearing. There's nothing to hide behind. Hey, look at King. Sniffing like he found out something. What is it, boy? King acts as if he'd found a scent he recognized. Must be the scent of that fellow's horse. King caught the scent at the hitch rack in front of the cafe. Hey, that must be it, then. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's the matter? That fellow must have tied his horse to this sapling here. The horse would have broken loose and run away when the cabin burned. Gee, that's right, Sergeant. The man was lying. He must have set fire to the cabin himself. Let's get back to town yeah. right away. If what I think is true, we've been badly fooled. Let's hurry. Get it back. It was supper time in Selkirk, and the usual group who lounged around the big stove at the trading post had gone to eat. Scotty McCloud was alone behind the counter. Ah, I wish business would always be as good as it's been this day. <laughs> I might as well go back and fix some bitters while they have the time. 
there. More customers. What? Three masked crooks. Reach, mister, and don't move. Aye, aye. I'm reaching, mister. Keep him covered, Jim. Check and I'll clean out the safe. Right. Come on, sir. Right. Unlucky to find the safe unlocked. Uh, tis unlucky for me with all the gold I've taken in this day. Shut up. Hurry up, boys. Somebody might come in. If anyone does, you know what to do. We've got everything. Let's get out of here. With Sergeant Preston and his dog king in town, you crooks aren't going to get far. <laughs> That's a laugh. That Marty and his dog are out hunting for us right now. Miles from here. Yeah, they sure are. They went on a wild goose chase. Let's get going. Come on. As soon as folks in town find out about this... You're not going to tell them about it for a while, mister. This will keep you quiet. Oh. Let's beat it. Now we'll separate. I'll meet both of you on the boat later. Right. Let's get going. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. A few minutes after the crooks left the trading post, Scotty regained uh, consciousness. Oh, my, my head. Uh, to get to the doctors. Have my, my head bandaged. Slowly, Scotty made his way outside and crossed the street to the cafe. When he entered, his appearance caused some excitement among the customers. Hey, Scotty, hey, hey, you look like you... Hey, you're hurt. Thank you. Oh, he is hurt. What happened, Scotty? Somebody go get the doctor to come over here and fix him up. All right, I'll go get the doctor. Here, here Scotty. Sit down. Uh, thanks, laddie. Uh, tell us what happened. Thieves. Three of them. They wore bandanas over their faces. They came in. Grabbed my safe. What can you try that? Then they hit me over the head. Somebody better find Sergeant Preston. Oh, uh, not long after the robbery, Sergeant Preston, with a prospector and king, entered the cafe. Here's Sergeant Preston now. Sergeant, we've been looking for you. What's happened? Three masked crooks robbed a trading post a while ago. What about Scotty? They socked him over the head and knocked him out. He'll be all right, though. The doc fixed him up. I'll go right over there. Come on, King. Whoa, whoa. At the trading post, Sergeant Preston heard the details of the robbery from Scotty. He came in when I was alone. They must have planned it that way. Sorry I was out of town, Scotty. I, I don't know how they knew that, too. But when I said you and King would get after them, one of them said you were away hunting for them. I see. Another said something about you going on a wild goose chase. He was right. King and I'll take a look around outside, Scotty. Come on, boy. Whoa! Whoa! Well, King... We fell for that fellow's trick in the cafe a while ago, but you did get the scent of his horse. It's up to you now, boy. Find the scent. <laughs> Steady, Blackie. <laughs> All right, King. Find him, fellow. Find him. <laughs> Get up, <Blackie. laughs> For some time, Sergeant Preston followed King as the great dog ran before him, sniffing the ground and barking intermittently. <laughs> the Mountie was puzzled by the route the crooks had seemed to have taken. The trail of Turk's horse led the sergeant and his dog in a great circle around Selkirk. Before long, snow began to fall. It was then that Sergeant Preston noticed the tracks of only one horse. He pulled to a stop for a moment. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't get this. Wait, King. We don't want to go on another wild goose chase. But if I get one of the crooks, I'll be able to get a line on the other two. Go on, boy. We'll trail this one. Get up, Blackie. Come on. It was about dawn when Sergeant Preston and King approached the end of the trail they were following. Oh, buggy, oh, boy. Quiet, King. The fellow's trail has led us right back to the waterfront in Selkirk. The last boat of the season for the States is about ready to sail. Get up, buggy, come on. Sergeant Preston realized the whistle he had heard was the warning whistle just before casting off. He urged his horse, Blackie, into a fast pace and soon arrived at the gangplank. Oh, buggy, hold now. Come on, King, hurry. Oh, oh, oh. The Mountie and his dog hurried up the gangplank, and as he approached the wheelhouse, Preston called out, Captain, wait! Don't cast off! Who says I'm not... Oh, oh, it's you, Sergeant. What's the trouble? I think the men who robbed the trading post are on board this boat. I heard about that robbery, Sergeant. What makes you think the thieves are aboard? King and I trailed one of them here. Any passengers come aboard during the early morning hours? I know one man did about an hour ago. I was with the purser when the man was assigned to bunk in a cabin with two other men. We filled a capacity this trip. Do you remember the number of that cabin, Captain? I believe it's cabin five, down along this deck on the port side. Thanks, I'll find it. Come along, King. We 
we'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, how about you and your whole family going to the baseball game? You'll have the time of your lives. Seeing those smashing home runs, watching exciting double plays and strikeouts, eating peanuts and Cracker Jack. Why not go this very week? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yep, admission is absolutely free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Pack 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker Pop wheat or Pop rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Pack 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. Inside cabin number five, Larry Rowland and Turk and two of the crooks was sitting on one of the bunks counting the cash and gold they'd stolen from the trading post. And there was a tap on the cabin door. Open up, fellas. That's Jim. Let him in, sir. Right. Hi, Jim. Yeah. Hey, that mommy and his dog just came aboard. I saw him. Are you sure, Jim? Positive. He went to talk to the captain. Well, he mackerel. Wonder how he found out we're aboard. I don't know, but what are we going to do? Calm down. He doesn't have anything on it. Oh, no. He's sure to recognize Turk. Yeah, that's right. Well, what's the difference? Tell him you're, you're leaving like a lot of others. That you have nothing to stay here for since you were robbed and your cabin burned. Yeah. Yeah, that ought to work all right. Get that golden cash into the bag and we'll sew it under the mattress. Come on. Yeah. Now, lift up the mattress a minute. Right. Now, now that'll hide him. Fix the mattress back over them now. I reckon he'll soon be coming here. Yeah. Just sit tight, Jim, and let me and Sir handle everything. I sure hope we get away with it. Proves how smart that money is, by the way. Quiet. It must be Preston. Go open the door, Tuck. All right. Oh, it's a sergeant. He's dog. <laughs> I'm glad to see you again, sergeant. Did you have any luck with you? I think I have had luck. You're just the man I want to see. For sure. Come on in. Quiet, King. You decided to leave Selkirk rather suddenly, didn't you? That's right. After all being burned out and robbed, there was no reason for me to stay. I decided to get out while I had the chance. Uh, since my two friends were gone anyway. Oh, I see. These are friends of yours, then. That's right. They, uh... They left me the cash to pay my fare to the States. Oh, that was generous of them. But it so happens my dog and I trailed you from the trading post after it was robbed. How do you account for that? Uh, well, you see, Sergeant, uh, I was in there just before the robbery. Then I came aboard the boat. You took a long way on horseback to reach the boat, and all you had to do was walk a couple of blocks. And you came aboard only about an hour ago. Oh, that... <laughs> Well, I went ashore again last night. Stop lying. You rode your horse from your shack to the cafe to tell me you'd been robbed and burned out. How is it the cooks didn't notice your horse outside your shack? Well, I don't know. Anyway, you're just guessing, Sergeant. You're trying to make me admit something I didn't do. You're not leaving town till I find out the truth. I'm holding you and your friends for questioning. Put away the gun, Sergeant. You don't have anything on us. You have no right to... Just a minute. Preston noticed King sniffing along the bunk. And he noticed further that the eyes of the three men were on the dog as if expecting something to happen. I'll have a look around the cabin. Watch them, King. As Preston started toward the bunk as if to make a search, Turk spoke nervously. Are oh, you snooping around that bunk, Sergeant? Oh, you seem worried about it. I'll turn back the mattress. While King watched the crooks, Preston reached down and turned back the mattress. Well, the money bag's from the trading post. Hey, get away from there. I'll fix you, you snooping red dog. The intelligent dog, King, went into action. As Larry reached for his gun, he sprang. At the same time, Preston fired at Turk. Hold it! Oh, man, get that dog away in hell. I'll settle that much. Try it! Oh, my arm. Get that dog away. Don't, watch him, boy. We heard shooting in here. Yes, Captain. King and I have found the cooks around the trading post. 
I figure they're the same ones who robbed the hotel and shot the constable. Holy smoke, are you sure? Yes. Those money bags from the trading post are proof enough. These men aren't going to sail with you, Captain. I'm glad of that. We'll sail as soon as you take them ashore. I'll take them ashore right now and return Scotty's money bags to the trading post. Fine, Sergeant. I want to get through before the ice closes in. I think you'll make it. You sure have nerve, Sergeant. Coming to this cabin alone and knowing that you'd be facing these three crooks. I wouldn't have come to the cabin without King. You see, I really wasn't alone. <laughs> that dog's a cause of us being caught. Yeah, I wish I'd had the chance to shoot him. Right Watch there. it. King doesn't like that. Just keep him away from me. I'd rather take a bullet. King's a fine dog. And a smart one when it comes to catching crooks. That's right. Because of King's help, we'll put these crooks behind bars where they belong. This case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's wave of the song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordo's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii Calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. The situation at the Rainbow Mine is critical. There are outlaws in the camp and outlaws camped in the hills surrounding the mine. The gang is determined there shall be no interference with their plans. And sharpshooters are standing guard above the Dawson Trail. The trail Sergeant Preston must use to reach the mine. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals Shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle. Produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. And directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>